Hello and welcome back to SPECT. I'm glad to be here and I want to be going through the showcase of Warhammer Conquest models from issues 1s to 80 and I'll show you what I did with each issue and the armies that I've built from them. So we've got Sons of the Phoenix, the Blood Angels and the Verdant Lipomas from the Death Guard. You'll get to see it and trust me, it took a while. Now before that, there is a ramble. I'll put a timestamp descriptive so you could jump straight ahead to the models if you want to see it but that will tell you how I got there and what I plan to do with the models in the future after completing conquest I quickly realized I was in mourning I was never going to have another surprise package arrive at my door once a month bring me that sweet hobby treat Kind of like an imperial sanctioned Santa Claus. It was a clear indicator to my family, uh, even to myself, that I was about to have some hobby time. Where I was going to paint, build, or whatever it was going to be, it was going to be for me. Just sweet hobby bliss. Just that quiet time. Even Spec Junior knew that when the magazines turned up, I was going to spend some time building, painting, and getting on with it. And once we were done, I would show her the models, and we'll talk about them. Now, after a week and a half of laying around and many cups of tea, <clears throat> PG Tip sponsor me, uh, recording and deleting what I thought would be effectively the showcase, the final showcase and a collection of all the models, I realised that I wasn't happy. I had that feeling like I'd reached the end of a really good book and that it was a final page and I just wanted more. So, in total childish defiance, I grabbed my paintbrush and painted up about 50 Astrid Militarium models. I repaired my Necrons that was in the bottom of the box for that sweet Blood Angel bro fist. Uh, I even went on to Blackstone Fortress and completed the mission that I had been playing for over a year. Uh, I started it on the channel and I just finished it. I tidied up my paints, I cleared up my model space. I even tidied up my recycling box. So you could kind of see what was going on here. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I was just avoiding things that needed to be done. And really what needed to be done was for me to record the final video, as I said that I would do, the collective. But I sat down with more tea and biscuits. Yeah, there were, there were hobnobs. And I spent time reflecting and what happened and why? Was it that I had lost my passion? You know, was it that I didn't know what to do anymore? So I spent time thinking about it and then it became pretty clear for me. For me, my whole life, I've been a collector, whether it's cards, games, RPGs, whatever it is. And I've always made a point of buying things that are just continuous and they really don't end. So it could be comics and I will collect hundreds of comics lots of different titles and that's why I probably have lots of different armies but then the sense of fulfillment when I complete a run uh, you know like maybe I go back and buy an issue that's like 25 years old and then that finally completes you know the first 75 issues of a comic whatever it may be it gave me a sense of achievement the same sense that I get when I'm building things uh, you know when I build models and whatnot I thought that having a hobby that was shareable that people could enjoy they can have open access to was really a plan for me from the start uh, even when i first started out the channel it was slightly different in the beginning but that was a point and then i started conquest and when i started conquest one thing that i wanted to change was it just wasn't a collection it was going to be an open door to a hobby that people enjoy because when I found out about it, there were so many barriers and so many misconceptions that when I first came into contact with Warhammer 40,000, I was just really confused, overwhelmed, and didn't want to know. And I'm not that kind of guy which would just turn down a, a sci-fi hobby. Years later, I came across it again when it was presented in a lot clearer way, and it was very easy for me to access, and it was really enjoyable. And there are plenty of channels on YouTube which kind of you know, um, go through those demonstrations. And those are the things that kind of encourage me to think about it and make it even more accessible. 
because there was a still a level of understanding that you had to be in the hobby and know where things were before you could really get through the door. So when it came to Conquest, when I was building it, the intent was always to be, you know, like, how can I make this easier? How can I save people money? How can I point people in the right direction so maybe things that they can try next? Even with what I was doing, it was all about people having the fun parts of the hobbies, you know, less falling over, less stumbling blocks. So they could take that small amount of time that they might have, and in that time, it would give them a chance just to reset and live, just breathe a little. And then it was like, bam, that's what I needed. That's what I wanted for myself. And I kind of forgotten that. And what was really silly is that every time I end the videos, I always talk about enjoying time. And you guys are going to be like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. It's really obvious. But somehow I'd forgotten. I thought, well, let me go back and have a look from the start. So I went back and had a look at a few of my videos from the start. And I looked at some of my later videos just to see if I had lost my passion. Just to see if it had gone, maybe something happened, I could spot it. But as I was going through the videos, I could see that my ideas had shifted. And it's kind of reflected in my three armies, which you'll see, which is the Sons of the Phoenix, the Blood Angels, and the Verdant Lipomas, which is the Death Guard. It's kind of strange because the original plan was very simple. I was going to build this army and start a slow grow campaign. Meet people, play the army, see what happens, find out what new models I can add to improve the army. It would be like a trial and error. Meet people face to face and expand that network. And it's not networking in a sense of business, it was networking in a sense of growth of character, pushing and challenging, expanding, making things better for everybody. I know it sounds a little bit ambitious, but the friendships that I've gained over this time have been so valuable since I set up this channel. I really appreciate them. When I think about it now, currently I'm sitting about 550 people that have the similar mindset of expansion and growth. Now during this current time, that original plan has to be put aside. It's not currently possible due to the way that the world is. I still look forward to making it happen in the future. But for now, let's just take it as I now understand that I haven't lost a passion, but that I've just lost my way a little. The understanding is, is that this is a close of that chapter. And now it's the start of a new chapter. So let's move on to the showcasing. So I thought the best way to start this off is with the Blood Angels. This is how I first started collecting Conquest. And I'm starting with the HQ choices. And there was a lot in the magazine that we got. And it was really cool. We even got like a secret um, lieutenant if you play Blood Angels right there. You see them on like page 67 of the Blood Angels Codex. So we got ourselves a chaplain. A couple of lieutenants there. And that was the limited edition Ultramarines model, but you know what, whatever. There's plenty of lieutenants. We have the Grav Captain Primaris. There was also a standard Primaris Captain, which I can't find at the moment for some strange reason. And the two heroes from the Horus Heresy, a one Terminator Cataphracti uh, Captain and a Chaplain. But really, the original idea was for me, it was to start creating a Blood Angels Primaris Army because I've never used Primaris. I always stuck to the classic Marines. Um, and then things started to change over, but for now, that's the start. Very happy with paint styles. If you want to see more on each video for these things, uh, you can check them out. That's the paint color scheme I used. Uh, but hey, there you go. Let's move on to the Elites. It's on to the Elite section, and as you can see there, we've got an Apothecary, a Redemptor Dreadnought, awesome, uh, with Flamers, Missiles and whatnot. Uh, we then had the aggressors, and I think these were the best out of the um, elite section that they gave us. For the flamestorm gauntlets, yes, they could have had the, you know, the the bolter version, but that was a hell of a lot better for me. And the reavers, and there's one of those that need repair and work. Um, I did get multiple issues of some of these, and that was great. I could have done with one more of these guys, but it is what it is. 
from the point of view of starting out an army, having that uh, HQ choices along with these elites actually take up quite a lot of slots and can give you a bit of variation and choice. I know the models have changed since, but you know, considering when this first came out, these were pretty good. It's attack choice. Now they did actually supply three of these, uh, but as you can see to my shame, I have not yet painted it. Uh, I am working up the paint effect there, you can see, to get that graduation tone. It will look more like a, uh, what would it be? A flesh terror, more so than a blood angel, but I will bring him back up to these colors to fit in. It's just kind of just testing a paint scheme there. Again, these were awesome models, and I really got to try that technique uh, with the candy effect and the highlighting it worked out really well. Very, very shiny, very cool. Um, lots of fun, but this was the only fast attack that we got with this magazine that I painted up in this way. We did get the bikes and a uh, land speeder, but this is what I did uh, for Blood Angels. To the heavy support option, uh, you can see here Hell Blasters. Mm, Hell Blasters. <laughs> we got five in the magazine. Uh, I've got to paint one up, or should I say two? And I'm looking to kind of get them in this over-highlighted uh, paint style here. Kind of develop that later on, and you'll see that in comparison to my troops. Uh, these are brilliant. They do a lot of work on the field, uh, and they are well worth it. So I was happy to get those. I've, you know, when I tried to buy them originally on their own, they were sold out in the stores. So to get them in the magazine, I was well chuffed. And that's your Hell Blasters for heavy support. So for troops choices, we got two sets of scouts. Uh, one has multiple weapons, but for the Blood Angels, I use the snipers. Uh, I, can't, I don't know where one of the other snipers has gone, it's just gone walkies. That's the way of things in my place. And 10 intercessors. Yep, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> I had to think about that for a moment because all the names are very similar. Uh, originally I converted this guy and this was one of the first guys I painted up uh, to have the chainsaw. I think his finger broke off so I decided rather than have a pointy dude with that finger put on a chainsaw. And strangely enough, you can now add uh, alternative weapons to sergeants. So that worked out fairly well. I've got one that needs to be painted. You get the idea that's going on here. But this really was the last model that I painted up for the Blood Angels. And... It kind of signified a change of style uh, and aesthetic and the and look. And I've gone from this uh, to this. Now, some people will like the classic, just pure Mephisto on red, but this was like a layer work up. And I think this is the first time I've actually been able to show this on camera and kind of get the gradients that are involved in that. Uh, you know, it's it's painted from top to bottom. It's really nice. So all of these models might get a repaint based on that, but you got 10 of those guys. So overall, you got a good few troop, uh, troops choice, uh, two five-man squads of intercessors and two uh, five-man squads sets of scouts uh, with alternative weapons. That was really good. So overall, it was a really interesting aspect for my Blood Angels. I did get a lot completed to add to my standard Marines. Now I did get a few extra models, uh, so I did get an extra Redemptor and I did get the additional group of uh, aggressors and these were painted up or the bases were styled to face off against the Tyranids. Uh, they're going on the Tyranid, Tyranid world. As you can see this Redemptor isn't as beat up as the other one and uh, that's intentional because this was a fresh strike, uh, you know, first incursion on the planet. So I was quite happy with that. And once I got to that point, I decided to change over. And I think it became, uh, I came to the realization when I got my fifth uh, kind of uh, Hell Blaster, I decided, okay, great, that's completed that set. So let's start something new, as I may mention before about being a collector. So let's move on to the HQ choices of the Sons of the Phoenix. Uh, we got ourselves two lieutenants there, either end, Primaris Captain, Primaris Captain in Grav Armour, and Primaris Chaplain. Uh, these guys are absolutely awesome and excellent. Uh, yes, brilliant. Wish I had more, but this will do. 
I'm very happy with these and um, I had to stylize them. I wanted to do something different, I wanted a bit of a challenge, so I changed to Sons of the Phoenix, which is the Imperial Fist kind of successor chapter. Uh, and I wanted that challenge to expand my painting ability, uh, to make me learn how to paint a lot better, and to get more detail in my work and take time really. And I did that with these, um, with this whole kind of army. I was really happy with that. So from making the candles, there's a video for that painting white, which is very tricky. Uh, and paying attention to even the smallest things. I even had to make the chapter kind of logo on there in the shoulder pad there. Chapter markings, and that's that's all good. There's still a bit more work to go on them, but I'm very, very happy with that. And that's the HQs that was there. So these are my elites. You've got the aggressors. Um, you've got the ancient there, Primaris. You've got Redemptor. You've seen that guy before. And a couple of uh, sad Reavers there. <laughs> I do have one knocking around. I can't remember where it is right at this moment. But when I find it, you know, I'll add him in. But I still need a few more to make that squad complete. You need at least five minimum. Uh, but let's see what's going on here. So with this banner, uh, it's just freehand painted and I'm kind of happy with that. Again, it was to push my skills. Uh, so I'm kind of glad with that. He does still need like an icon or logo on his head just there. Same with those guys. But I was pleased with this guy and his purity seals and whatnot and even the additional kind of banner on top. Um, detail on the side, he, he works really well. And litanies placed on him. Yeah, it, it, it works really well. Even a blue glow, um, which you can see just there from his vents. And that started becoming like a unifying theme over the army as well, especially with vents. So that's the elites. My heavies, uh, so you can see here, five hell blasters. So really, the conquest set only contains five hell blasters, but because I got double the amount uh, when it came to the hell blaster magazines, I was able to get two squads, one for my Blood Angels, one for my Sons of the Phoenix. And as you know, I love me some Hell Blasters. <laughs> uh, they still get work done. One of them keeps on blowing himself up. I'm just saying is all. But other than that, they're, they're fun uh, and, and really cool. I had a bit of fun there with the highlighting effects, but that's what we got. We got those five. Up next is the fast attacks. So we have interceptors, we've got three of them, a land speeder um, with a missile launcher, multi melter, and we've got our bikes, we've got three of them there, and an attack bike. And yes, that attack bike does have the multi melter and heavy bolter on it, so I can decide which one I want to use without having to have multiple models. This was really cool to see, uh, and it fills out like you, I think it's your battalion slot, I can't even remember right now. Uh, it's a bit late in the day, but yeah, again, fun, clean, uh, vent work, and uh, I think, uh, is it on this? Yeah, they, they all got them. The vents in the back there, you can see they're highlighted. Uh, these were just fun to paint. Again, there's another learning experience. So I'm very happy with that, and that's the fast attack slots. For our troop choices, we have these five scouts with multiple different weapons. And we I managed to get myself 20 intercessors. Now, they were all from the Conquest magazine. Uh, originally, I got the five. And I went to Forbidden Planet and sitting there on a the shelf about maybe three weeks after it was first released were all of these um, intercessors. So I just picked them up, uh, used some for giveaways. Um, you know, gave them friends and uh, painted up the rest and it really started me out on this new army. So that was interesting because originally I was going to use them as blood angels. But that's not what I did in the end. So you see there the same kind of idea behind painting the bolts as red and, you know, having that detail, the gold trim, all of it's there. Uh, I would add more purity seals on some of them. I would add some uh, details on the helm there like this one's got future but I'll take my time for that there we go you can see that a little more clearly but they, they, were, they were good they're a lot of fun a lot of work but it was worth it now this is where 
the Blood Angels and really the Sons of the Phoenix differ in what I collected and that's next which is the transport choices okay. and these were the big ticket items that Conquest sold me on when they first started which was getting my hands on a repulsor uh, even though it only worked out maybe to be like 15 pound cheaper or so uh, it was fun and both of these uh, have all the weapon options and I can take them out and change them over this is the command tank which is why it's golded out um, you know and this is the secondary transport and um, that's for the primaries to follow up behind the characters main characters and simple squad yeah th this just made me very very happy uh, getting the decals done uh, printing them out getting the designs on them you know because I had to sit there and illustrate and recreate them it wasn't that easy because I couldn't find anything anywhere uh, I wanted the grav plates to be different to remind me that there's a knockback of a couple of inches so I had them activated which is why they are that color it will remind me and I did repaint the weapon here the the last time originally I did paint it red to match the other guns um, but it was just too garish in comparison to the color range so just having the heavy bolters red that just you know that's okay the last talent's kind of obvious for me to see and that is it for the sons of the phoenix so overall a large collection you have almost every single um slot army slot available being taken up it's great uh, and i'm well chuffed with these models and uh, let's move on to one outstanding model, believe it or not, for the Primaris side. And here he is, the last model, which is a Primaris Librarian. Uh, he's the final one, which is outstanding. And I remember thinking back that when I got him, I wanted to use him for every single army. So rather than dedicating him just to one army, painting up as Death Watch, and that kind of you know speaks levels to his his skill or you know his his ability i did that and i remember thinking to myself i should just start a uh, a death watch army primaris army and i never really got round to it uh i changed for these guys that's not the point <laughs> but there's one interesting thing that i did gain from kind of creating this model and this was I think was about issue number eight was the ability or the use of hot glue um, you know playing with it and the different things that I can do with it so after I did this I learned how to do flamer effects and it didn't take long for me to keep manipulating the hot glue and now all of my librarians have that effect on it or something similar so that I know that it is a librarian it doesn't change anything in game um, but when you're standing at a distance you can always tell that that is your librarian no matter you know what you've got around it and that's really handy for me especially from distance you've got things like you know your aggressors there you can see yeah, it's really important anyway um that is the astarte side of things the primary astartes so let me get the death guards together now and i'll go through their items Moving on to the Death Guard HQ choices. I've got two Lords of Contagion, Typhus, and a Malignant Plague Caster. Now there's only four, uh, and in comparison to the Primaris Space Marines, it doesn't seem very much in the collection versus Conquest, or in the Conquest, uh, and that's okay. Because you, this is a very specific army. I think it's actually a very specific build in what they give you. But either way, um, I've got my Typhus here. The way that he's painted up is, you know, is like Marmite for some people. Some people love it, some people don't. But it works out very well and looks very grim dark. And that's why I like him, uh, Death Guard. So, you know, do one if you don't like it. <laughs> it's my model, not yours. Uh, and then we've got a Stand Lord of Contagion in the Death Guard green. Painted up pretty much in the way that Conquest said. And it turns out okay. Um, I like these models. I like the design. I like the characters. 
I like the chunky feel of the models and I have never owned any kind of Death Guard models so to have these was, was great and I think that I was able to get most of these models I think I got like three copies of this guy uh, simply because most people just left them on the shelf I think most people bought that starter set I think it's the first strike so they had these models and they just really wanted the Primaris models so they kind of cherry picked those magazines so it was all in all a good bargain for me that's the HQ and on to the massive list of elites okay so I wasn't joking when I said there's a massive list of elites Death Guard have so many of them so we've got the Terminators uh, there we've got the Biologist Putrefire not just Bright Bringer, Foul Blight Spawn, um, the Play Surgeon, and the Tally Man. I had to kind of memorize that, that's, that's a lot. But there are so many models, but they all have some fantastic buffs. And if you're learning to play, uh, especially first time round, I would say this is the more complex of the two armies in learning how to synergize the models. Uh, there is a note here which this character is Lord Felfius in the Conquest magazine. He doesn't come on a hero size base, but they do give him his own stat block. Because it's not really a thing in the 40k game, I've just chucked him in with the rest of the Terminators. So he makes up the seven. <laughs> Which for those that follow Nurgle will know that's a thing. So yeah, again, that's the elites. Uh, and that's quite a lovely selection. So on to, I believe, Fast Attack. Okay, next we have our Fast Attacks, and we have three, three, and two. <laughs> so I managed to get this Malefic Blight Hauler. These were kind of whipped up right away, and when they resold them on um, Hashit website, they just vanished instantly. Amazing models, eight pounds, brilliant bargain saving. I really do like these. Um, yeah, these are these are the one. I think probably the best model for the Death Guard. Now, for getting work done and damage in game, these Foul Blight Spawns, uh, again, they're all fun. I just painted those up differently, give them different looks. That's fine. And Lammy and Sammy there that came later on, again, uh, with that rough effect on them. Uh, they're all fun. But that's a fast attack. Uh, straightforward. I think that because you only initially get one of each of these, it wouldn't be enough if you was playing it in the game. But if you got three, it, it works. So if you was lucky enough to get, you know, three copies, that was good. And I think you got this particular one from issue number 46 and a whole heap of uh, Plague Marines. So what I'm going to do now is go for Troops Choice and then Heavy. I lied. Let's do the Heavy first. I looked at the box full of troops and realized there's a lot of troops I've got in there from the pox walkers and the whatnots. Um, the heavy, they only supplied you the Plague Burst Crawler. I say only, it came in two issues. It is the kind of counterpart to the Space Marines Primaris um, Repulsor, and it came in half the issues, so it was really effective price wise. I managed to get hold of two. I uh, really did want three because, you know, three in numbers. Uh, both of them have options to change all the weaponry out and change them around. Uh, fun models. This is my favourite. Uh, I think it goes without saying. I managed to get some UV paint on there. And it was pretty cool at night time. <laughs> so other than that, that is the heavy choice. Let's grab troops and then transport. Okay, now this is the troops choices. There are so many Plague Marines and many Pox Walkers. Now, as I said, I picked up multiple issues in the issue number 46. So that gave me a lot of Plague Marines. And I think the first few issues had multiple Plague Marines in and it was quite cheap. I think the first, maybe within the first six issues, I think you got like six or so anyway, and they were cheap. So I managed to pick up a few. We also get 10 cultists, and I think we're meant to have 20 pox walkers, and maybe, I want to say 10 plague marines. So, this is 
really a good start for an army. Um, Death Guard, doesn't matter which strategies you really want to take. Whether you wanted to go for Marines or Pox Walkers with Typhus, take your pick. It's there for you. You did get a variety of different champions as well, which I was chuffed with. You can see there. If it does its focus, there we go. Uh, and you can see the styles, which has gone from that kind of soft Death Guard green colours. Uh, with the limited colour palette I had at the time to something kind of more grim dark and matching even though it's kind of gone from vibrant and bright onto grim dark <laughs> and you can even see that in the pox walkers the variations even down to the bases and that's okay I'm very happy with that it's fun and it identifies a change in my painting style and also even down to materials that I had to perform that work uh, I do like these uh, kind of odd one outs, I call them, where they're characters that they didn't put many of in. So the Death Guards are like the banner. Where's he gone? So we've got the banner there. They only put one of him in there. And I've got those champions. We only got two plasma guys, or really only got one plasma guy. Uh, I put that together from, again, multiple kits. And that's it. Oh, wait, where's he gone? I've got my Vault 101. Uh, Pox Walker there. Uh, he's just escaped Vault 101. He's making his way out across the Fallout fields. <laughs> right. Um, they are many and they took a long time to put out. So let's put them back in a box and grab the troops choice. And really, troops choice, the transport. This is the Rhino, which came in two parts and I think started my real learning on sponge painting because I left my little one, I expect Junior to paint this up and she did the sponging, she got all those colours down right I just added in little bits with the kind of uh, patina there a little bit of rusting and she did the rest and I thought that's a really interesting style, it really is dark um, if I say grim dark, it would be a bit much, but it worked really well. And then I took that forward and basically, basically utilised that on all of my models, so they all held a theme from that point going forward. It doesn't really matter too much, but it just made it more cohesive for me. So that's it for all the models. Um, I hope that was that was fun. Uh, it definitely was fun for me, and thank you for spending that time. It is appreciated really, as you heard from earlier. And for those of you that missed it, I enjoyed my time. Hope you've enjoyed yours. Um, but before I head off, I wanna say thank you very much. I will be uh, talking about expanding these armies. Even though I wanna get them on the battlefield, originally the plan was to take them out and use the armies as they stand to battle against people. Uh, you know, just to have a couple of bat reps with them and see how they fared, get some feedback and then start improving or altering the army. I was always going to get a Mortarion uh, for my army, um, for the Death Guard, because that's such a beautiful model, such a beautiful figure, that I would definitely want to have that to paint you know, as a challenge and as something to look forward to, because my painting skill has improved, uh, as you can see, over that time. And I'm quite happy with the end result, and I could always touch it up afterwards if I start learning new things and want to add to it. As regards, as regards to the um, Primaris, I already added a box from Shadow Spear uh, onto the army roster. What I will also add, I think, is a few Invictus Warsuits and a few more Aggressors, which are the Bolt Storm Aggressors. And I think that that then kind of brings that army to completion. So that will now give me an opportunity to put that on the table, play it, and go from there. But as they stand at the moment, I think testing out a few couple of uh, hundred points, or maybe 500 points of each army, face them off against each other, a couple of dice rolls, see how it pans out. It'll be really good fun, and I'll do that on the channel. Uh, <laughs> due to our friend uh, C19, that might be the only way to move forward as regards to that expansion. Because I don't want to kind of stop what I'm doing here. Based on that, I'm still going to hobby anyway. So let's do that in this environment that I'm in. And make it work. Because uh, I'm sure we can and we will. 
<laughs> we always find a way. So this has been Spect. I really enjoyed this time. I really hope you have. And you've really got some decent hobby time out of this. You know, I will be coming back and doing a lot more. And I think I will showcase the armies that I was working on in that time I was procrastinating. Or should I say, being busy doing the things which wasn't really productive. So that at least you can see the progress there. So take care, be safe, and as always, PC out.